we have this massive, huge amount of potential products for you to go to market with. There's this marketing stack that's out there and we want to meet each of those areas of the marketing stack. Plus we want some of those other, you know, help you out with productivity and some of the other products, those types of things. And on top of that, you can use the Vendasta system for your own custom products. So there's all, all these kind of factors that come into play. And um, so one of the one of, one of the pieces that arises from this is you know, how do you take this marketplace of products, this this grouping of of excellent both Vendasta and vendor products, and you know how do you create something? that is a little bit more formulaic or a little bit more standardized that you can use as a template to to take to market especially when you're starting out with vendas and you're maybe you know your your head spinning looking at looking at the marketplace that's what i want to show you today and and get feedback on and, and talk about what the way we're thinking about some of those things and I'm never going to do a presentation either to my team or outside of the team without mentioning the customer journey. And I hope that some of you guys are, are using that in the same way. And uh, the reason being is I, I believe I'm a very firm believer on the customer journey is, is how we, you know, talk to uh, a client and tell them why are these things important, right? Why are the, the things that we do, the products that we sell them, the things that they're buying from us, why is it important to their business? That's where the customer journey is so great. And I hope in, in different sessions, you've gone through that customer journey and maybe we repeat that um, ongoing because it's ingrained into the back of my head from so many times going through it. But I really do think it's the most most important kind of piece of the puzzle here. So, you know, when we think about that the customer journey, uh, there's so many kind of different points that we can emphasize and and show that importance. But, you know, uh, just to give a sneak peek on our thought process around some of these beginning packages, um, there really is something that's important. We were even having a discussion like, you know, as we start out this around advertising, right, and driving traffic. And, and you, you need to show some of those things, right? You need, need some of those things to happen, which is obviously falls into that awareness piece. But um, we're firm believers at Vendasta around online presence in general as well. So we'll, we'll see that come out uh, in, in some of the packages uh, there. So just to, you know, very briefly, again, reiterate that customer journey, someone that is a, a customer. So someone who is trying to find what your client does, for example, they are going to go through this this sort of um, stage. It's changed so much in the past 10 years for the way that your clients are found and their services are put out there. But that awareness piece, they need to get out there. Hey, this is who we are and this is what we do. Heard about an advertising piece for you know a product. So this is the product we have. This is what it does, right? You need to get that word out there. Um, but then when, once that word is out there, people are going to use their phones and their laptops or whatever else. They're going to search findability is super important. We know that Google My Business is more important than ever. It's arguably more important than a website. I'd love to debate that uh, one way or the other, but that findability is so important. The reviews that are out there, the way that I like to put it, that's how a business gets chosen compared to its competitors, right? Looking at three, how am I going to choose between these three? Well, their reputation is what's going to come through there. Conversion points are, are super important. Like I said, whether that's GMB or a website, but that conversion point, um, you know, how are they actually going to pay you? It's pretty important. And then advocacy as well. And some people have this as a, a focal point even sometimes. I like to have social media in here and refer to it as like, this is how as a business you get repeat and referral business. So whether you guys are using the street level sales deck or using some version of that customer journey, again, I like to reiterate on it because I think it's so important. But let's set the stage here for a second, because what we're talking about here are packages and how to kind of simplify a, a go-to-market strategy using, using packages as well. But why, from a Vendasta perspective, do we talk about packages so much? Well, again, some info that you've maybe seen in your Vendasta journey, and if not, then this is a, a great refresher. This is uh, data that we have from this is internal uh, uh, data, so so we're not getting this from from some external point, but the amount of products 
that a client purchases from you exponentially, I shouldn't say exponentially, but it, it vastly increases the retention rate of that client. And what do you do when you bundle multiple things together? That means they're, they're, the basket size is bigger and they're purchasing those products for, you know, all of them up, up front, right? It's not, not over time. But look at that difference with four products that someone is purchasing, purchasing from you um, and an increased rate. I actually have a good example of this. So if they buy one product from you, the retention rate might be 55% after one year, but four products, it's 55% after just about three years. So that's a big uh, change in that retention rate. And the more that they can get from you as a trusted reseller, um, the better that retention rate is going to be. Now, that's total products pur purchased. Um, actually, I had something. Maybe I'll go to it after this. Uh, didn't go into my deck, apparently. But it's also on, um, on packages and bundling those packages uh, together as well. But with that in mind, and some of this data on increasing retention, that's why we often look to a package strategy, a bundled product strategy, um, rather than an a la carte strategy. So to give a little bit of context around uh, these packages that we have, this is some of, uh, some of the, the, the leadership here um, on what we call the acquisition side, we were thinking through, okay, how do we simplify and standardize, you know, some of the kind of base packages that we have, but have some uh, really easy to use elements in those packages as well. So I want to show those to you here today. I'm not saying like drop everything that you're currently doing and, and use these, but maybe there's some insight, maybe there's some different ways that you can take uh, take this to add to your go-to-market strategy as well. And maybe at the end of this, what would be a really interesting exercise is we could talk a little bit about um, some of the existing partners that we have here. You know, What are you doing for a go-to-market? What's working for you? And I would love to bounce uh, some of those ideas around as well. So here's what we have I want to show them to you really quickly. It's got the products that are inside. I'm going to show to show you to them in a store that we built out as well. So you can see that uh, we like to use a, sometimes a rocket ship theme. Um, but I will tell you right now, just in my ability to create slides is not that great. My ability to name packages is also not that great. So um, they're a little bit corny, but yeah, yeah I kind of like it too. So we're starting out you know, with a very simple, this is a, a, you know, a pro toolkit. We refer to it as internally. This is a software specific package. The launch pad at about at a retail of $147. I know we're going to have some Canadian partners on here. The pricing that we have set for this is typically in US dollars, but um, so take that with a grain of salt as well. Um, and then as we <laughs> start to increase with these packages, we want to add elements into this that take a low amount of your fulfillment, but a high amount of value to that client. So that's the idea behind these packages and using them as a base is that there are more automated ways to drive value for, the, for your clients um, where you don't have to have direct involvement. You can have direct involvement, like any of this, or they can have direct involvement if they're they're going in and using reputation management, for example. But that's some of the uh, the thought process around uh, where we start here. So um, I'm going to get into it in a, in a second. You know, where might you use this package? What kind of business is it good for? Um, that sort of thing as well. But there's five total ones. So this, like I mentioned before, these levels of packages are meant to be um, all encompassing from an online presence perspective. And they are budget based. You know, sometimes a go to market strategy I've seen uh, as well, maybe you want to match it to the snapshot report and you want to have them a little bit more siloed to, hey, this is my review solution. This is my SEO solution. And uh, again, that's fine. These ones are meant to be simplified so that you can approach anyone and say, okay, you know, based on what you need, I think this is the budget that you might fit into for this. So um, five total ranging from 147 at that launch launch pad all the way up to these, what I, you know, would call in orbit, your 
in, in orbit at 1197. Um, that's the great piece about white labeling is you can change all the names on these and, and make them uh, good as well. So uh, let's take a look at them kind of one by one and a little bit about our thought press thought process around these go-to-market packages and where they might fit in. So you've got, you know, what we would call historically like a DIY, a do-it-yourself package in this case. There are software elements here. Um, so they, you, the client that you're dealing with in this case probably has a pretty low budget, but, uh, you know, maybe they have some time or they have some, some staff that can handle some of these things to, you know, to help that online presence. However, um, with all of these elements, we want there to be value without a lot of uh, need for manual intervention as well. So the listing suite of products is something that can help with that. Um, you're increasing those listings, you're helping with their local SEO uh, without them having to go and, and do things without you having to, to do things as well. So it's good for some of those, you know, new businesses, they, they, their information is nowhere, they need to, need to be found, they've got a low budget. That's where Launchpad comes in. And then as we start going up in here, you'll see what we added at this ignition uh, point as well is Google My Business Claim and then Google Ads for Agency as well. So an automated AI-based Google Ads product. So again, there's, there's kind of minimal uh, piece and it's a low budget as well. Um, and, and you know, I, we might've used the wrong terminology on that one product, I'll change that after. Google ads for very small businesses is what it's called in the, in the platform as well. I'll make that change after, after we send this out. But the, the idea here is we want to start driving traffic somewhere. And uh, some of that traffic that we're gonna start to drive to should be on their Google My Business as well. So again, maybe it is a startup, maybe they're, they're a smaller kind of brick and mortar uh, base. You'll see that that repeat. These these packages are not necessarily first and foremost intended for an e-commerce style client. These are mostly intended for a local business SMB client that you would be uh, be selling to. As as we know, you know, with Vendasta, it's kind of a bread and butter um, style. So you start to add a little bit of advertising uh, behind that, making sure that Google My Business is claimed so that there's um, you're driving traffic to that GMB and there's a phone number. And if they have a website, then there's a website, some of those pieces. You'll notice we're not trying to fit everything in here. So you'll notice in these packages, we're not trying to fit uh, a website into it necessarily. If they need a website, there are always gonna be a la carte solutions for them to do some of those pieces. It's not the intent here is to, because um, I'm sure as you, you guys all know, you know, having a website in a package, maybe they have a website, maybe they don't need an updated website. There's so many factors that play into that website piece. So again, if you go to market from a package perspective, there's probably an element of a la carte that you want to, on top of that as well. Quick quick question, Craig. We have a, we have a couple of questions in the chat here. Sure. So the first one is, are these prices suggested retail or wholesale price? That's a great question. And thank you for bringing that up. These are suggested retail prices, not wholesale. I'll show you the, the packages in a second. The reason I don't want to use wholesale, obviously there's different uh, wholesale pricing depending on the subscription you're at, those sorts of things. But these are suggested retail pricing. Awesome. David, thanks you for that. And then second question from Renee here, would the ignition package work for a multi-location client where each location is small? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And multi-location is such an interesting um, perspective on any of this. Here's my experience with multi-locations. A, it depends how many locations that you're trying to pitch on. If it's a really low number of locations, then yes, I think you maybe go with, you know, an ignition package and you do it on a per location basis and you keep that suggested retail. But as you increase in the number of locations that you're pitching to, you almost always want to decrease your margin to accommodate for the volume that you're getting from a multi-location perspective. So keep that in mind. It really, you know, and I say that like, if you're pitching a 50 location, multi-location, you're probably not gonna keep that same suggested on a per location basis. You can tweak that a little bit so that you have the kind of margin that you want uh, from a volume base. Okay, Perfect. thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good and question. Then, uh, we got two more here and we'll move on for a little longer. Are these available in the recommended packages section of the marketplace? 
Good question. Not right now, but we are working towards that. Uh, this project that we're doing uh, here is to um, sort of, uh, I don't want to say fully change, but I think we need a little update on our recommended package. This is the project that we want to put forward to uh, to put in there. Awesome. And then last one from James here is the social marketing down there, Express or Pro? Uh, pro. These are all pro. okay. All pro products in here doesn't mean that you couldn't uh, have, you know, and an even you could have an express level uh, pro, uh, package at the start. And I've seen people, you know, have that express toolkit and charge, you know, charge some amount for it, right? 30 bucks, 50 bucks a month, something like that. So depending on where you want to come in, but all the products that we're showing here um, are pro versions of the software. Brilliant. Great questions, you guys. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for your answers, Greg. Yeah, no problem. That's uh, those are great questions. Keep them coming, and and I went once I start going. Sometimes it's hard for me to stop. So thanks, Brett, <laughs> for uh, for stopping me, and we'll we'll uh, we can keep answering questions as we go. So as we get into ignition here, you can see um, what we're doing is we're increasing the amount of budget, and then we're also adding some things like SMS text on a on a monthly basis to generate more reviews. And you know this the as we go through. We, we, we sort of want to think about the life cycle of that business. Where are they at? And what are some of the needs that they have? So this launchpad business or someone on the ignition, right? Uh, a, a client that's in this level, maybe they don't need as concerted of uh, review generation strategy. So what I mean there is like they use customer voice, but they've got maybe one client coming through. They've got someone doing it. Maybe they use the kiosk feature, generate a couple of reviews. But as you start to get up um, into this level in a more established business, now they can start to use the SMS feature. They can generate, they want more consistent reviews. Um, it generate positive reviews, those sorts of things. So adding in some SMS strategy, we've got the listing pieces in there. Um, and then we've got an increased budget from a, from a, a Google ads perspective and, uh, and a focus on uh, GMB as well. And as we, you know, move into, okay, stratosphere and in orbit, what we're getting into here is now let's diversify the traffic strategy that we're going to use and let's drive some immediate traffic, whether it's to the website or their GMB again, but in this case, probably a website, right? They're at that level. Um, let's drive some traffic with a, a Google ad strategy. And then let's also add in some organic so that they can have uh, a long-term and a short-term traffic strategy for their business. Um, you know, more established business, they want to diversify that. They don't want all their eggs in one basket as they move on. So stratosphere, you start to get into that. And then in orbit, increase the budget. We've got SEO, plus we add in some social posting as well, further diversifying where that strategy is. And to my customer journey uh, piece earlier too, that's where, um, you know, you start to try and create fans of your business. You want repeat and referral. So now, you know, getting into the in orbit, we're, we're hitting um, almost all of the, the customer journey. I won't say all of it, because again, we're not uh, putting a website in here necessarily. GMB could be that conversion point, but you're covering that, you're covering the online presence, um, and really in, in a lot of those areas. Now, the strategy with these go to markets, again, is to cover that online presence. There's always the opportunity that a client comes to you with a specific need in mind. That's where you might say, okay, I've got a solution for that. It's just SEO or it's just this thing and you're a little bit more targeted. But as you try and cover that online presence, this is a good way to kind of move, move up Maybe, you know, a term that I use quite a bit is land and expand. So maybe you start with a smaller package and you start to increase budget and increase pieces as results are shown there as well. Brett, do we have more, more questions at this point before I show them in the store? No more questions. We have a great feature request for these. Um, it's coming from Bill Binning. It's hyped up by Renee as well. Um, just suggesting as these are developed, adding some sort of indicator of the level of engagement that the client or the um, agency is going to need um, to take that's advantage really of the projects point. in these. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's the biggest thing, right? Like just elite, that's what we want to do is just alleviate the effort on <laughs> the partner and the clients. And so I think that's a great idea 
so you can quickly analyze, okay, this one's for me because I don't want to be as engaged or maybe I do want yeah. to be as engaged. Yeah. Yeah, we can have a hands-off meter or something like that. No, there's always going to be different levels of engagement on this. I think that's a really good point. We can certainly, I think what we can do right now is add in, um, you know, what we would recommend for that. And you can always be more engaged or less engaged, depending on that. Make sure that you're tailoring your price point, your retail price to that level of engagement as well. If you're spending a lot of time on it, make sure your time is valued in there. If you want this to be more set and forget it, and that's the arrangement that you have with your client, then make sure the price reflects that too. Great, awesome. uh, great comment on that. So let's just take a look here at, I just wanna show, let's see if I can just come back. I just wanna show the way we built this out right now and kind of the way it looks in the store. So this is some of the the graphics that we have here. Again, I, I don't, at this point in time, I don't want to go into the exact wholesale that we have built out here because it's going to be different um, in each place. But I will uh, let you know that the, the idea uh, behind these price points and where the margin where we landed uh, is a bit of a range, but it is mostly in the, you know, 45 to 60% range from a margin perspective. So like, like anything that we have, you are free to set that to the level that you want, but just to give you an idea on where, uh, where our recommended retail lands, that's kind of the range that we're seeing across, uh, across each of those packages. So quick, quick um, question, Craig, sure. sorry to interrupt. Um, we had two more just before we move to on from the last topic there, yeah. um, the Google ads product, was that digital ads with Fendasta or was that Google Adbot? It is, it is one of, one of the um, AI based Google ads pieces. Um, again, the idea, the idea with using one of those in these packages is because, um, because these are more full service across the board, across the marketing stack packages um, and not maybe a focused, digital strategy, we want to use one of those. As you move into, you know, a, a, as that business grows and you identify that specific need that they want to drive something where they have a campaign like that and your budget increases and it gets into the range of, you know, $1,000, yeah, I'd say 500 and above or $1,000, that's when you want to start to include uh, the Vendasta ad team in that uh, but we did want to use this as a basis that could be used on our essentials level and above as well so um good question perfect and then how would we access how would partners access like can we access these specific packages and then which one would be the best done for you yeah so not yet uh, we don't have them we don't have these entirely in the platform yet um, so this is something that you know, Brett and I can talk about if, you know, how we want to share this or if it, it goes somewhere, um, uh, because there's, there's a few different resources that we have built out, but they are a little bit raw right now, but we can certainly get them out there. Um, and, uh, the best done for you as you move up in this, uh, there's higher levels of uh, being done for you. So that's why in the in orbit, there actually are some marketing services and the social posting that's involved in there. So there's some, some you know, full done for you motions. And then most of the elements here are, you know, have, you know, the SEO piece, the ads, social um, are all hands off from the partner uh, perspective. The only place where you might come in is if you wanted to respond to reviews for them. We don't have that as a managed piece in this package specifically. So whether they do it or you do it, something that you can determine uh, from that package. But as you go, there's levels of um, of there's levels of uh, things that are being done for them in each of these packages because again, we want uh, as much of that as possible with these ones to kind of take away from the maybe effort or the, the pieces that you guys need to do specifically and have them more automated to drive value in an automated way. Awesome. Thank you. Great. So um, just to give like a little sneak peek on what this could look like, it's five packages uh, that we have here. And um, 
that you, you could use a combination of them. You could use different, you know, price points uh, for that sort of thing. But these are uh, kind of where we landed uh, for online presence, you know, full, full uh, as, as automated as possible uh, packages. So um, that's, you know, Brett, that's really a lot of what I wanted to go through here today uh, with everyone. So I would like love to open it up. I know we did just answer some questions as we were going through. I'd love to open up the floor if anyone wants to ask a question live as well, or wants to maybe uh, go into a little bit hey, this is what I've been doing for a go-to-market. This has worked really well for me. I'd love to have feedback uh, across the board on that too, if anyone's interested in sharing today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's open the floor. If you have a question, turn on your mic and I'm sure Craig will have an answer for you. I'm not sure if it's a diffusion of responsibility because there's a lot of people or perhaps we're all just sold. Yeah, I don't have a question. I just want to say kudos. Um, I think this is really exciting um, to have this ability. I'm new to Vendosta the last couple of months. And so I've been in the process of trying to piece together packages on my own, kind of customized. I mean, we've been around for a while. So you know, our big three has always been kind of reputation management, social media, content creation. I mean, it's some levels and forms. So I like the way that you've put that together. Because again, I think that we're at the stage now where we where we know what most businesses need, at least some level. And like you said, a lot of it really kind of depends on their budget and what they can afford and what stage they're at. So I'm just, I'm really excited. Well done. Well, David, yeah, reach out to your whoever your kind of main point of contact is and we'd be happy to share more information uh, with these if you want to use these as a little bit of a base okay great we'll do hey craig i had a question um what are your thoughts about putting prices on your store or contacting you know the person you know the agency directly i mean what are the two philosophies on that right because people see the price and then then you know they say it's too much or whatever i mean what are your thoughts on that it's a it's a an interesting um, kind of you know because I've seen it both ways, James. So I appreciate that question. There's here's I want to just talk about those two things and and what the advantages and disadvantages, from my opinion, are having I I like having you know some basis of pricing on your website for the element of transparency that it brings. You know, because if you, if someone comes to you and they see a price point, they're like, oh, that's way too expensive. They're probably not the kind of customer that you want to have, right? right? If they're, if that's their immediate reaction that you're getting, uh, it actually might be a good thing that, that you're getting that. So I like that level of transparency. If there's the ability for you to put their, you know, you contact for a custom package or do something like that i think that's another effective way to get around like hey we're not just rigid like this we can work with you on that um if you're afraid of something like that the opposite side of this i'm less on this side but this is you know i like to look at both sides of things is you know how do you justify the price point before you james have had the ability to sell the value of that right, right? so um you know my personal uh, opinion I like the transparency of pricing on a website I completely understand the other side of it depending on maybe how complex your solution is or the way that that you want to go go about that um, the sales process I think there's a balance there you know I'm trying yeah. to, I'm, I've been trying to figure out that balance of like put the package up here's the prices um, and then there's custom things that you can put up there and say, contact us. So I'm trying to figure out that balance, you know, cause like you said, you got to build a value. It doesn't matter if it's $50 or 500, you got to build some value in before, because it's easy. Everybody, there's a bazillion website agencies out there that can put up pricing all day long. What does it mean really? But yep. where's the value? How do you, how do you get that to me? Getting that appointment and getting that value is critical. So by putting up everything with a price on it, then they're just shopping you. They're coming to your website to shop you and never even engaging with you if you do it too much. You know? Yeah, but you know, the the if we think about the customer journey, James, the other side of that too is that, and you might think about this from a personal perspective, like let's say you're trying to buy a TV. I use this all the time. It's not an exact one-to-one -one comparison. You're trying to buy a TV. So maybe you're, you are looking around a little bit. You don't see a price point. You're probably not going to go with that because you don't 
want to dig in before you know if it's within your budget. So you're right. right. It's a balancing game. There's lots of different opinions uh, that are out there. So I can't uh, land yeah. in one place or another. Yeah. Can I comment on thing, that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Uh, first off, Craig, right? Uh, yes. You don't know this, but you and I go back, way back. I uh, I saw you for the first time in, uh, when you were actually still out there hitting the, uh, hitting the field, as you said. And then uh, I think you took, you took my partner development manager from me, which was Mel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There yeah, you go. Working together. Um, what I just want to say is that I think that w the question of putting pricing and packages on your website, uh, what you have to kind of think about, and I brought this, this comment up in the past, um, you know, how are you positioning yourself as an agency? Meaning, um, the way I look at it, or the way I look at Core Limited, is that there's, there's three aspects. There is the, eight, the marketing agency, where we do everything that marketing agencies do. And I don't mean just from the, the, the solutions part I'm talking about, like, do we do, you know, uh, market research, for, you know, do we do competitive analysis? Do we have departments for each vertical? And, and we're very intimately and very knowledgeable about each vertical so that when we have a client that comes on board in that space, we can really speak about it comprehensively. Two, are we just offering software? Are we reselling software that provides a solution to whatever particular need a consumer has? Uh, and the third one is, are we consultants? Meaning, have we gone out into the marketplace, identified the best in breed or best of breed with respect to products and services, and all we're doing is we're just selecting them on behalf of the client because for them, it's an overwhelming process to try to make a decision on which company do you go with. So when you put your pricing, or in my case, with Core Limited, we have packages on our website. We show the prices. We have individual products on our website, which we show the product. But we understand that the person that's going to come to the website and look at our pricing, they're not looking for consultation. They're like anyone else that goes out, engages with a SaaS provider where you don't really have someone, you know, giving you the value proposition or selling you on why the price is. We go to a company, we see what they offer, and they typically have a pricing tab. We click on it, we ask ourselves if it makes sense, and we sign up. We don't really... We're not expecting to be sold because we're selling ourselves through our own awareness consideration phase. So I think you just have to kind of look at it from the standpoint of putting pricing on the website is not for maybe let's say ideal clients that are getting consulting from you or that are getting truly the full you know relationship management from you. Those are for the individuals that really can get out there, do the research themselves, and all they're looking for is do you have the product that I can that I can purchase from you. Um, so that that's just my, my thought on it. Um, so when you, when, you, when you have situations where you're dealing with clients or excuse me, prospects and you're talking about, you know, let's sit down, let's have a Q&A, let's, let's find out where the pain points are, you know, here's what we've identified as, the, you, know, you know, how we can help you, here's the solution that we're offering and we're offering for you in this package and here's what it costs. That's a different track. That's the truly the do it with me and do it, you know, do it for me track. But the true do it yourself uh, in a sense of, you know, where I see, you know, the, the market going is that people are pretty sad about going online, doing the research, clicking on the and choosing, you know, good, better, best, and then signing up without really even speaking to a rep. Yeah. Thanks, Very man. well put, Robert. So Robert, let me ask you this. Yes. Um, so I actually really like what you just said. Um, so you're kind of segmenting your customers, right? Um, or do you think you can transition this transactional savvy customer into a consulting one in the future, right? Yeah, well, I mean, here, here's what I want, you know, because there's only a finite number of hours in the week. There's also an even less amount in terms of what, uh, in terms of, you know, how many I want to work, okay? So what yeah. I mean by that is that I want to have a handful of clients that I am intimately engaged with that I can handle, that I have the capacity to handle. And if that's 10, 15, 20, that's what it is. But then I want to have a S ton of people who just come to my website, go through the process that my website, website takes them along. Whereas it's not about going right to the pricing. It's about here's some of the, the, the terms, the, the, the subjects that people uh, throw around when they hear marketing or digital marketing. I educate them on what those are. And then I tie those into the solutions that fit those those terms. And I'm gonna go to my. Uh, I put a link in the in the uh, in the chat for my um, my specific pricing page. But my website is designed to move them along a, a, a journey 
where they're they're educating, they're creating the value themselves, uh, and then they sign up. So those are those are uh, those clients, or those customers, if you will. Uh, I don't really have a desire to manage them. I don't really have a desire to consult with them because just like I purchase, um, trying, just 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 like I purchase Spotify every month, no one calls me from Spotify to say, "Hey, how are you? Let's review your Spotify account." You know, how many songs do you listen to this month? They don't do that. I signed up. I didn't need anybody to do that. So there's a lot of people out there, a lot of a lot of businesses out there who either have someone on staff or they or the owners themselves who are quite capable of taking themselves through that buyer's journey. And all they need is, you know, a, a, a resource to get to get the to get the tools, to get the solutions. Yeah, Robert, you're at a really advanced motion there where you're 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 doing both of those things where you've got do it with me clients you're working with them and you have self-serve motions as well so it's a it's a great point it's a great place uh, to set yourself up to be at if i may um craig one of the issues i've brought up with a couple different people is if you sell the do-it-yourself package it is almost the chances of anybody going all the way through that without some issues is extremely low. For instance, um, customer voice. I sold that to a client. I'm new, so I didn't know 100% how it all worked. They sent out requests. When somebody tried to respond, they got a 404 error page not found. Now, apparently, it's due to the fact they had not connected their Google My Business page. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. There's nothing anywhere that told me as a sales rep or them as a do-it-yourself customer that to get it to work, you have to take that step. Yeah, that's and so, Daryl. Sure throughout the, the programs, little bitty things like that sure. really, really cut down on the support calls, make it a lot easier for us as sales reps and for our clients. Uh, so, Dara, great point. And uh, that specific scenario, I can't comment to uh, right now because if it's uh, found as a listing within our product, then it, sh it should direct there regardless of if the GMB is fully connected or not. That's something that we can we can look at or if you can connect with our success on demand team, they can help you to walk through. But I do want to touch on a point that you made there from a, a do-it-yourself perspective of um, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to use some of those products and services that are there, but where what the D, the DIY package or um, a, a single product that you have there can be a really great launching point into the realization that I am a busy business owner and trying to operate this system uh, on a consistent basis doesn't fit. I want to sell more bagels. I want to do this that's where you can start to move into a, a more managed service and mm -hmm. increase the margin and increase the, that piece there as well. So I want everyone to, th to think about the different um, uh, abilities of a, a DIY package. Yeah, and everything other than that one client that I've sold, I've sold as I do it for you. But you get bogged down pretty quickly unless you've you got enough margin in there and I'm learning that you can afford to have somebody else do the work. So I'm trying yeah. to transition from one point to another point. But if I struggle on the products, I can really imagine the customer struggling on the products. For so sure. Thanks, Daryl. My point of view on a, a couple items. I love the package. You know, I've made more sales since I've been on Vendesta than I ever thought possible. So you're doing a lot right. I don't want to come across like everything's bad because that's a long ways from the truth. I love the product. I love the packages. Appreciate it, Daryl. Thanks. Tim, you got your uh, hand up there? Yeah. Um, when uh, taking Robert's point and moving on, when, when we're doing DIY packages, um, do we have get started videos that are white labeled for the, for the customers? That's a great. Things. That's a great question. There are resources, and I don't know if one of the other uh, Vendastians that are on here might be able to drop a link in the chat. We, there's a number of uh, walkthrough videos that Tim. They're not necessarily white labeled off the hop. They are. They don't mention Vendasta, right? If you have the capability to rebrand that, you're more than welcome to rebrand that video uh, as well. But those walkthrough videos um, for 
the products that we've developed um, are available from our uh, support resources. Yeah. You know, one, yeah. Of, one of the things that I, I do, which is, uh, it's, I don't see the jury still out on it, but um, and obviously, you know, basket size, meaning the number of products that you offer a client or someone that purchases from you does, you know, help with retention. Another thing that helps with retention, at least in my experience, is uh, adoption rate. You know, how quickly I can get a new client using the system, getting comfortable with the system, making it part of their day-to-day -day routine like any other platform that they use to run their business. So whether it's a DIY situation or, a, or I'm handling the fulfillment uh, or the agency, me, Core Limits handling the fulfillment, um, once the contract is signed, um, they get an email that basically says, now the next step in this journey is to book a time for your orientation series. This is something I got from HubSpot a long time ago. HubSpot, when you, you can sign for HubSpot directly. You don't really need to speak to a rep. They have a free platform. But what they, what they do actually is they will sell you service calls, calls to train yourself. So I'm not charging, but I do uh, make sure the, uh, the new client understands that I'm giving them three calls. All right, three calls. It can be spread out over, you know, one every two weeks, one every week, but they get three calls. And during those three calls, I'm really taking a deep dive. It's kind of like a boot camp of the business app, uh, the core solution that they purchased from me or purchased from, you know, the, the, the website directly. Uh, and then I let them know after that, if they need any more training like that, um, they can go um, to, um, I give them another link where they can book a call, but that that's at a cost. So um, I think to kind of, again, negate some of the, um, the, the, the hiccups that come along with just kind of turning a, a client loose on, you know, any particular product solution, you know, having some sort of system, some sort of process in place where we're taking it upon themselves to, to really get them trained, used to use the system and comfortable. And you may find out to Craig's point that, you know what, this is too much. It's overwhelming. I don't want to do it. What's it going to cost for me to have you guys do it? There's your upsell. Or you can charge them consulting. You know, we can do it for you for two hours, you know, under 50 bucks. An hour. How I've worked around that at this point is because I'm dealing with some people I've known for a few months now is I'll introduce one product to them and point blank tell them, hey, this is new marketing package. We're going to learn together. And as long as I do that, people are pretty good about it. But I can't do that forever, obviously. But as I learn, once I go through it with one client, it's easy to go through it with the next client. Great. Yeah, thanks, guys. Robert, great yeah. insight on that. Um, I just want to see here, uh, because I'm not reading the chat, Brett, do we have any chat questions that we could answer? Yeah, I, I was keeping an eye on that. And um, we have some suggestions. Um, will there be, okay, yeah. So a big thing is an ETA on these packages. You've developed a lot of interest in these packages. Um, do you, are we consider like, do we have an ETA on including these in the marketplace or is that something we're still kind of in ideation phase? Yeah, it's a little bit further than ideation yeah. phase, but I don't have a timeline uh, on it right now for when they're, they're going to occur. Fair. To touch on that though, uh, we do hear the interest in this and uh, the different levels of engagement as well, the different solution solution offerings that do it for me, do it with me. Um, and we're definitely noting this down. I'm taking lots of great notes on this as well. I'm going to have those conversations. Um, Craig, will there be packages for core business items, meaning HR, payroll, benefits, 401k, et cetera? Sorry, could you repeat that, that one? Yeah, Brett? absolutely. Um, so Kristen's asking, will there be packages for core business items, meaning HR, payroll, benefits, 401k, et cetera? Those are elements of our marketplace that we're expanding upon outside of the kind of digital marketing spectrum. Um, the way that I view those, though, is less from a package perspective and more as an individual identified need on a case by case basis that, that you can bring forward. So uh, I think it's a really good point. And I think we'll get to that that point eventually. But right now, the core packaging is more on the marketing side and then more uh, kind of individual use case for productivity and HR and some of those places. Absolutely couple more in here. Um, Bill, he is just tying it back to the customer journey. Um, mentioned, as you stated, these are mostly presents for mid-funnel packages. 
do you have any plans to add top of funnel, bottle and funnel packages, or are those like two client specific slash customized? Yeah, I think I think this is kind of the first step forward, but I think that's a really interesting idea. Do we do we, you know, craft something that's really top of funnel? Do we craft something that's really bottom of the funnel? I like that as an idea, not something that we've bounced around yet, but I do like the way of looking at that for sure. Great. And it's 11.27 here, Louise, I, or maybe the Z is silent. I don't know. I see you have your hand up. I have a, I know, it, look, this is my first call that I joined. So uh, I just want Welcome. to congratulate Craig. Uh, also, all the, the other people that share their thoughts. Robert, I'm really imp impressed by your comments. It, it, it was very, very insightful. So thank you for sharing. Um, and Craig, uh, really impressive. Look. My onboarding calls have been amazing. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, we have a fantastic rep and a fantastic uh, onboarding coach, but this was a lot of knowledge packed in a very short time. Um, at least look, I'm, I'm brand new here. So I, I just wanna say that I'm thankful and I hope to see more of these. Great, thanks Luis, appreciate that. Thank you very much. That's hey, Luis, you should look to register for the, uh, the Wednesday water cooler calls that we have. Right, do you have a link for that? Yeah, I'll I'm, drop it in the chat here. We also have a link for that in our community. And a, a quick side note as well. Um, <laughs> I made a link tree for a lot of Conquer Locals offerings. So if you check us out on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, go to our bio, click that link tree. You'll be able to see all the socials we're on, um, the Wednesday webinar, the Friday webinar here. And let me just drop this in here as we reach 11.30. Craig is the busiest guy at Vendasta aside from our CEO. So I won't take too much of his time up. Yeah, I wanna just thank everyone for attending here today though. Really appreciate all the engagement and the comments and questions. That creates a better dialogue than I ever could uh, just uh, going on and on and on. So really appreciate that from everyone. And uh, thanks so much, uh, Brett, for leading us here today. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Um, I'm going to, it's taken me a second here. I'm going to drop that Wednesday notification, Wednesday uh, meeting link in the forums. It was tagged to the top before. However, it's not there anymore. It's supposed to be one more on that. But yeah, uh, Louise, you can check out the, do you know, are you familiar with the community and the forums? No. Um, okay. so yeah, so that, that is, you see, very insightful, this call, there we go. so I'm just send that up and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'll join. Absolutely. So the, uh, the community is, oh, whoop, I accidentally direct messages, message that. So in, in the chat there, I dropped the community link. Um, if you have any questions ever about product or strategy feature requests, drop them in there. And then either a Vendastian, someone on our side will get back to you or a partner expert such as Mr. Davis will answer your questions swiftly as well. So oh my God. I'm just gonna pawn off so much work to you, Robert. That's, a, that's uh, the curse of speaking up and <laughs> being influential. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone, the last time he's gonna speak up. Way to yeah. go! Good oh. job, man. You just killed it, man. You just killed it. Have a good week, yeah, man. Here. Just have a great weekend, guys. Thank you yeah. very much, everyone. Thank awesome. you so much for coming. Have a great weekend, <laughs> James. You're not invited next week. Yeah, see you later. <laughs>